Thank you for joining me back here on the last segment on today's show. And I wanted to bring up this topic around the San Francisco 49ers and their beloved fullback, their Swiss Army knife, Kyle Huszczyk. Um, The 49ers basically overall had to make a lot of tough decisions this year um, from re-signing Eric Armstead. They obviously couldn't do that. Um, trying to re-sign Kyle Huszczyk, they were more successful doing that than Eric Armstead. Brandon Ayuk, obviously, how much money they're going to pay him with the season that he just had. <clears throat> they got already the extension with Christian McCaffrey done, which was great. Juwan Jennings also coming back to the team. But talking about Eric Armstead and Kyle Huszczyk, they were both in a similar situation where they were more veteran players and the 49ers approached both of them with the potential of taking a pay cut for both of them. Ideally, I would have assumed for the San Francisco 49ers, Eric Armstead, obviously now with the Jaguars, it wasn't a successful attempt to get him to take a pay cut. Uh, I think I could be wrong, but he, I did see him make a comment about it and how um, he felt disrespected by it um, with just him being the longest tenured 49er from this group of guys. He really didn't want to take a pay cut, but the 49ers obviously needed it to keep all these good players on their roster. They couldn't agree to a pay cut with him, so he moved on. And with Kyle Huszczyk, it was harder to do it. It was obviously a painful situation for him to go through, but they were more successful in doing it. And um, they got it done with Huszczyk because, one, like I mentioned, he didn't want to take a pay cut, but he did, and it ended up saving the 49ers $4 million dollars in cap space, and it keeps him on the team going forward too, which is a positive thing that I will reference back to further into this segment. But right now, I wanted to bring up what Kyle Huszczyk said, speaking with NBC Sports Bay Area, on just how it all went down, his feelings around it, and just you know what made him want to do it. He said, Honestly, it hurt when John came to me and asked. I wasn't necessarily expecting it, and I think it's natural for anybody that it kind of hurts your ego. It hurts your heart a little bit. I do understand that it's a business, but I do feel like I'm as valuable as what I expected to get paid. And at the end of the day, he basically said his des- his desire to stay as a San Francisco 49er um, was what got him to stay on the team and take that pay cut. Also, it was important for him to remain as the highest paid fullback, and he did. He didn't take that big of a pay cut for him not to be the highest paid fullback. So that's still a positive for him. He still holds on to that title. Um, And he said that that was important to him as well because I don't think I can name another fullback other than Patrick Ricard right now in the NFL or at least one that does as much to this team as Kyle Huszczyk does because he isn't just your typical fullback. He just doesn't block for the running back. He lines up everywhere. He's almost like a mini tight end he could be a slot receiver he could be a a blocker on the end of the line he could be a typical fullback he does a lot for this team and even right now at 33 years old I think he still brings a lot to this team even from what I mentioned on the field but also off the field that um, I'm sure would have been a painful divorce for both sides if they couldn't get something done I'm sure the 49ers felt bad about it trying to get Hughes shake to do it but going back to his age, going back to the position he plays as well. He's 33 years old as a fullback. You could imagine in a pecking order of who you approach to take a pay cut, you're probably going to go to the fullback first among all the positions that you can do and the one that's most likely to do it, one that might not affect the team so much. It is a unique situation with Huszczyk just because, like I mentioned, he does so much for them, but um, they did approach him and they were successful in doing it. Um, and knowing that you have the extension with Christian McCaffrey, you can't obviously afford to mess that up. They were able to get it done, much in part for Kyle Huszczyk being a good sport about it, and also the potential of extending Brandon Ayuk in the future. You needed that extra cap space. They got it, and now it's up to them to kind of figure it out, but staying on Kyle Huszczyk and what it means for him, um, not only him, but around this topic surrounding him because more pay cut talks could be coming with the 49ers later, maybe this year or towards the end of this year or even in the offseason next year. I don't think this is the last we're going to hear about them trying to get their players to take a pay cut. 
just because that is the um, payoff you have when you have so many good players, when you have so many good players on your team. You can't all be the highest paid at your positions. It just doesn't work like that. Uh, Anthony Manzano, how's it going? Welcome to the show. Um, But yeah, that's a problem when you have an all-star roster. Obviously, it's great. You have the best tight end, arguably, one of the best quarterbacks, one of the best receivers, another great young receiver, and a great offensive line, the best running back. It all is great on the field. But once you get to these talks financially, um, they all can't be the highest paid at their position. So something has to happen. And with further extensions coming up later on, with Brock Purdy next offseason, Debo potentially also looking for a new contract next year, I don't think the pay cuts, the um, the pay cut discussions are the last that we're going to hear from the 49ers at all. Hushchuk was just the easiest one to do right now, and he was a good sport about it. He wanted to stay with the 49ers, so that played for for their benefit overall. But uh, Anthony says, do you think the one position in the NFL is going to be affected? Do you think the one position in the, in the, in the NFL is going to be affected the most is the fullback position in terms of free agency because not every team uses a fullback? Um, yeah, I, I think so. Um it's one, like I mentioned, it's one of those positions where I can't personally name another great fullback other than Hughescheck or Patrick Ricard. And it is going almost out of style now to have a typical fullback, like you mentioned, just because the league is more going towards a passing style, more points, not so much running the ball, not so much eye formation where you need a fullback, really. And if you need extra blockers, Again, teams don't go to a fullback. They just bring in another offensive lineman. Um, So that's why I think you have really only two that stand out, at least to me, because they're really good at what they do, and they fit the styles of their team. Kyle Huszczyk being that Swiss Army knife, Patrick Ricard being more of that run-blocking fullback that fits the Ravens' style and what they're trying to do. It's definitely one of the positions that is going to be affected with how the NFL is shifting to more of a passing league. But um, in terms of free agency and things like that, it kind of leads into my next point um, that you brought it up, Anthony, and that point about uh, free agency and how it's affected. Uh, Kyle Huesche actually brought it up, interestingly enough, and this really just caught my attention because he mentioned how it was the first time in his career that how long he plays might not you know, be determined by him. It might not come down to him just deciding to all right, the 49ers don't want me. I'm just going to go and play somewhere else. It doesn't really work like that for a fullback, like you mentioned, Anthony, back to your point about free agency. Uh, uh, for a 33-year-old fullback to hit the market and to anticipate teams coming and calling his phone endlessly, it's not a realistic thing to happen. And he came to that realization and found it most appropriate to take the pay cut with the 49ers and it all goes hand in hand. I never really thought about it like that. Um, I heard Kyle Huschick's thoughts about it, and now that you're also bringing it up, it really is an intriguing point because um, it could just, you know, the fullback position could just, you know, die off right there. Um, if Kyle Huschick doesn't decide to resign, maybe another team doesn't sign him, and he decides to ultimately retire, and then you really only have Patrick Ricard, and he's getting up there as well. So not a lot of players if you talk about the next generation, are thinking about becoming fullbacks. Everything is more spread. Everything is more passing. So, yeah, it is one of the positions that is most affected. And Kyle Huszczyk even said that um, it was going to be extremely hard to play elsewhere for anybody else to sign him if he didn't take that pay cut and just stay with the 49ers and how highly they value him on that team. Regardless of how much he's getting paid, he is still the highest paid fullback. So, Ultimately, he just came down to the decision that this was probably the best chance right now at this point in his career to win a Super Bowl. And that's where it comes down to with some of these talks. You know, it's not all just about extensions and getting more money. Sometimes these conversations that Kyle Hushik has get overlooked a lot of the times, and it could be very beneficial. It already was beneficial to keeping Christian McCaffrey and bringing back Juwan Jennings, I'm sure. And also, it could play a part in Brandon Ayuk possibly signing back with more cap space. But, you know, I thought it was interesting, the points that he brought up. And for a 49ers team that's trying to keep everybody together, 
um, this could be a pivotal thing that keeps everybody together and keeps everybody happy. But will Brandon Ayuk really as the next piece of the puzzle to fall um, be able to stay on the team? Will the 49ers be able to keep him? Or will their efforts with Kyle Huszczyk sort of fall short if Brandon Ayuk and the 49ers can come to an agreement? Um, I'm more of a pessimist about that. I don't think it's going to happen, but um, he wants to be there, which is good, but we're going to have to see where the financial talks take these conversations as we get closer and closer to training camp. But that'll wrap it up for that segment. That'll wrap it up for the show. I want to thank you guys for joining me on today's episode of the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast. Please remember to like, follow, and subscribe to the show, as well as following the network on all forms of social media. If you want to see more of this show, check out the GSMC Sports Network channel and the GSMC Podcast Network channel on YouTube for a variety of different forms to watch the show, watch content around the show, around YouTube shorts, live all the live videos, and also individual segment videos are all on both YouTube channels. And as a final reminder, tune in every weekday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time to watch some more NFL discussions and listen to some more conversations around the NFL with me, Manny Moradiege, as your host. Thanking you for joining me, and I hope to see you guys back here with me again tomorrow. Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's gonna be a bad day. Yeah, I'm tired of shit, and the coffee ain't hit yet. Damn, ain't that great? I don't wanna go. To-